Hello and welcome to the Discover History YouTube channel and tonight we have the answer to our mystery object and we had several people take part in our mystery object from Monday and uh, I don't think, let me just think, I don't think, I'm pretty sure of this actually, no one got the correct answer. So just to remind you, this is the mystery object. Now it's pretty heavy so I'm not going to hold it in the air for too long. Um, so that's our mystery object, a very strange device. Uh, Ian Riley did actually contemplate, he did actually think maybe it's one of those things that you throw over the side of the boat and therefore your boat doesn't bump into things. It does actually look like one of those to be fair. However, it's extremely heavy and it's made out of metal. There we go. So it's made out of metal. Um, on the outside of it, there is some rope and it's been wired on to the outside and the rope is actually painted in tar. Now some of these were not just painted in tar, some of them were completely covered in thick bitumen, so thick tar to the point where you couldn't see the rope. However, I have seen them where you can still see the rope like this one. There's a handle at the top and there is also a little brass button or cap just of there and holding that cap up is a small piece of metal just of there if I pull that out that cap will be hitting the base plate basically it will be fired down and inside the metal container so I asked what that object was and I gave you a bit of a clue that it's actually from the 20th century so it's not like our little medieval padlock it's not like our Roman surgical item it's from the 20th century so the object is in fact a bomb it's actually a replica of an incendiary bomb now most people have actually seen incendiary bombs from the second world war and these were small metal bombs about that big really and they were designed to start fires hence why it uses the word incendiary however this is not an incendiary bomb from the second world war this is actually an incendiary bomb a replica of an incendiary bomb from the great war world war one and it's always interesting to show this when we do talks on the topic because most people don't know that britain had a bomb or had a bombing raid on it in the Great War. When we think of uh, bombing of towns and cities, we automatically think of the uh, vision of St. Paul's, for example, with the bombed buildings around. Or if you're from Worcestershire, we think of the stories of fire watchers looking out from factory roofs like my dad looking towards Birmingham and describing how they could see the orange glow of the Birmingham area due to their bombing. We think of the Blitz basically. However, Britain was bombed in the Great War. Britain saw its first bomb actually in 1914. Now, December 1914, Christmas 1914, Britain was in fact bombed for the first time. Now this put fear into everyone living on our island. And the reason was we had always relied on our fantastic Royal Navy. Remember, this is a Navy that had stood the test of time. This is a Navy that began life really from the sailors of the Armada era of 1588 up to the formation of the true navy um, uh, th that we know and love today. This was a well-established fighting force. And if you think about it, we had victory after victory. If you think of the Battle of Trafalgar, we had always ruled the waves. So we were very reliant on this country being protected by its fleet. However, the first bombs to land on Britain flew above the fleet so it basically made our royal navy defunct and on christmas or at christmas time in 1914 a biplane came across from uh, europe from france and it flew over the south coast in particular dover and then the pilot because it was only a little biplane the pilot was holding onto the stick took a bomb off his lap and flew relatively low over a big target a big military installation and that was Dover Castle 
What he actually did then was held the bomb over the side of the aircraft and dropped it. Dover, as you're all aware, is a big target. Unmissable. That bomb must have done great damage on Dover. The only problem is it did actually miss its target. It actually hit a vegetable patch outside the castle wall. Did no damage apart from firing some cabbages in the sky. That was it. Fierce casualties were the vegetables in that vegetable garden. And then the biplane went. But by 1915, a year into the war, we then saw the raids of the Zeppelin. And the Zeppelin was the airship. And this is a topic in its own right, to be fair. This is the airship, which is filled with the gas. There is a walkway running inside, so it's not just full of air. And then you have the gondolas underneath. And sometimes you have a gondola with the machine guns on and the bombs are kept. Uh, sometimes uh, you just have the one gondola and the gondola... Uh, is also the crew compartment. Um, what you can't see is there are machine gun posts on these and there is actually a machine gun post on the roof where you have to go up a ladder deep inside the balloon onto the roof and there's a small metal platform with some machine guns. So these are flying at high altitude and the Zeppelin uh, was the standard bombing machine of the Germans, even for the British to be fair. But this flew over Britain in 1915 and the standard bomb of the time were these. And very simply, what would be attached to the top of this usually was a streamer and that helped it sail to the ground uh, with great stability. And these would be primed and when they fluttered to the ground, when they hit the ground, it started the, uh, the, the cap here to, to, to detonate and it ignited in here the explosive and that explosive burnt ferociously for a small amount of time but what actually happened is as it burnt through the metal casing inside this it would then ignite the tarred rope well, as i said sometimes it was completely covered in pitch and that would continue the burning maybe even hours after the main explosive had gone out so this is actually a zeppelin bomb now, Britain was very fearful of these night attacks and these night attacks, these Zeppelins, were often referred to as baby killers purely because they had hit things like hospitals and even schools in their time. And people feared them because no longer was our Royal Navy effective. Uh, these flew above the Royal Navy and it made our country very vulnerable. Um, people had horror stories about hearing them in the night. There was even ghost stories of... Is that a Zeppelin up there? Actually, it's not. It's a low cloud, for example. There was a lot of fear associated with it. Britain, under the Defence of the Realm Act, actually set up a lot of very important uh, restrictions. For example, they started to impose blackout regulations. They told people if there was a Zeppelin in the area, stay indoors, stay inside your house, hide under the, uh, under the uh, tables, under the furniture and things like that. The sad thing is, because air power or flying machines was relatively new it was said that when people were told there were zeppelins in the air tonight most people actually went outside to see if they could see them which is actually quite shocking like i said though the defense of the rail map brought in a lot of regulations and this is one leaflet that tells you all the things that you must and must not do uh, if there is a zeppelin attack on your town and city as time went by however it was obvious that the Zeppelin was not a brilliant and effective uh, way of delivering bombs as such. And then over time, especially towards the end of the war, you had bombers starting to appear, British and German ones, but the Germans perfected their bombers quite early on. And this is your standard bomber, often referred to, especially late in the war, as the Gotter bombers. These were huge machines. And it's interesting because Britain used uh, biplanes as bombers right up, really, up to the Second World War. In 1919, it's quite interesting that the Daily Mail produced a map of London. And this map, as it says at the top, shows the Zeppelin and aeroplane bombs on London. So every black dot on this map is basically where one of these or a bomb similar landed during the Great War. Interesting fact as well, these new bombers that are flying over Britain between 1914 and 1918 were not unstoppable as the Germans found out in 1916. In 1916, a famous man 
known as William Leaf Robinson. There he is there. Victoria Cross winner managed to bring down the first Zeppelin over Britain and he was hailed a hero. Now the best thing about this man is the fact he's not from Worcester but he was commissioned into the Worcestershire Regiment. And if you go to Worcester Museum, now they've reopened, you can actually see uh, a little exhibition about him. And in particular, there's a piece of the Zeppelin that he managed to shoot down. This is the Sylvanier booklet that came out celebrating William Leaf Robinson. And throughout it, you will see pictures of the wrecked Zeppelin. So, I don't think anyone got it right this time. This mystery object was in fact a Zeppelin incendiary bomb dropped on Britain during the Great Great War between really 1915 and up to 1918. Anyway, stay safe. Make sure you get out and visit these museums now that they're opening again. And remember to follow the advice given by the government. Remember, coming up shortly, you will have to wear a mask if you go in shopping. But make sure you keep socially distant and make sure you continue to wash those hands as we did on the first day or the first period of COVID-19 back in February and March. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.